if you will turn with me and your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 22 and uh, and we go into the word of the Lord it says so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water and when they came to Marah they could not drink of the waters of Marah for they were bitter and we'll say bitter Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where there were twelve wells of water and three score and ten palm trees. And they encamped there by the waters. Psalm 34 verse 8 says this. O oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. And with the help of the Lord today, I want to teach on the topic of God is on top of it. God is on top of it. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, love you. Thank you for your many blessings. I pray, dear God, that you would help me today as I minister your word, dear God. Help me, Lord, just be used by you today, that you would be glorified and magnified and uplifted today, that as your word is spoken to God and taught, that you would change us and transform us and help us become what you want us to be. Help me, Lord. You place this in my heart, dear Lord Jesus. Help me, dear God, just express it in the way that you've given it to me. I love you, Lord, and I thank you for all that you do. You are a great God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. You know, I appreciate the ministry of this church. I'm going to say that. Amen. And the lessons that come across, amen, this sacred desk on Sundays and, and Wednesdays. And, and Sister Richards taught a lesson a few weeks ago about indifference. And I want to tell you, I check myself a lot since that lesson. And I tell her, I, tell, I told her, I think that we, you have, I have thought about that lesson. And uh, I don't want to be indifferent. Amen. I don't want to be indifferent. And I check myself. I, I, I do. And I, I appreciate the teaching. You know, on Sunday morning, we, we get taught by a doctor. Oh, my God. Amen. And Brother Justin... Amen, what a tremendous sermon in a limited time this past uh, Sunday, making room for a miracle. I've asked myself, am, am I making room? i make room. Amen. I have felt in my heart to teach on this subject for a couple of weeks now. And I tried not to. I don't know if that makes sense. I said, all right, Lord, just help me. And as much as I try to go somewhere else, and I think if you've uh, ministered before and tried not to go in the direction, you get straightened back out and said, no, you need to teach it. And I'm like, okay, all right, but help me because I just want to do it how you want me to do it and how I want to do it. Amen. And uh, so you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to help me and you have to be patient with me. And uh, I pray that at the end of this lesson, we will, we will grow, amen, and be better than we were before. You know, the word bitter, if you look it up in the dictionary, is defined as uh, being or inducing or marked by one of the five basic taste sensations that is particularly accurate, astringent, 
and often disagreeable, the characteristic of citrus peels, unsweetened cocoa, black coffee, and mature leafy greens, which I don't eat. <laughs> Amen. An example is like, you know, have you ever taken medicine and it leaves that bitter aftertaste because you didn't swallow it quick enough? Do you hate that? It's bitter. It's distasteful or distressing to the mind. It's marked by intensity and severity. Amen. Sometimes accompanied by severe pain. You know, you talk about it's just a bitter feeling. I think when I mention the word bitter, you understand what it is, right? It is not a pleasant thing. Amen. <clears throat> I don't see people, I mean, sometimes I, I see people that will begin peeling a grapefruit or an orange by biting it. Right, yeah, sorry, I couldn't do that. I had to find somewhere. I just clipped my fingernails, you know how that is. Uh, I would find a knife or something, because that taste is just horrid. Amen? Nobody wants to drink something bitter, put something bitter in their mouth, because the first thing you want to do is spit it right back out. <clears throat> bitter often relates to taste. It's unpleasant. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 23, and when, Mo when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were... Everybody say bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. The people murmured against Moses, saying, What then, or what shall we drink? We can't drink this water. You know, this happened immediately, or three days, after a great victory and a great testimony. The Israelites had seen a great victory prior to this instance in the Bible. Three days prior, they were celebrating defeating Pharaoh crossing the Red Sea on dry ground and seeing jailed walls of water come crashing down on the Egyptian army and they celebrated a great victory. In Exodus 15, 20, we read, And Miriam, the prophetess and the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and dances and Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously and the horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea. Israel came to these bitter waters right after a great victory. It seemed like everything was in order and everything was right. Amen. But while walking to the very, in the very path of the Lord's leading, we need to understand that their pace and their walk and the direction that they were taking beyond the Red Sea wasn't a random walk. They were being guided. Amen. Moses was leading him as God helped him lead the people. This is indicating that difficult experiences for God's people are not random to God. And they shouldn't be random to us. If we are in God's hands and God is leading and directing us and we end up in a place that's hard and is difficult, and that sometimes in our carnal mind we cannot comprehend, we need to understand that it is a pathway that God is taking us. Amen. This is the very first thing that they ran into on the other side of the Red Sea and in the wilderness. The very first thing that they ran into was bitterness. A great victory... And then they were thirsty. They hadn't had anything to drink for three days. They were parched. They needed water. They wanted something to drink. And the Lord led them to a, a source, a water source that was not good to drink. Now, I want to relay this right, and the Lord helped me do this, is is the fact is, is that when you come to a difficult time after a great victory, and this may be it, and I may end the blessing now, it's important that you don't become bitter because you're going through a hard time. Because something didn't go just the way you wanted it to go. You have to guard yourself not to get bitter with God. He had just brought them out of Egypt. 
Three days prior, they had crossed the Red Sea. They had a tremendous testimony of the goodness of God. And the first thing that they run to on the other side, and it could have been anything. It could have been a mountain. It could have been a deep valley. But they ran into something that challenged their faith. Now, this is the year to magnify the Lord and not to murmur. Amen. The pathway of God often leads through dry places. We should not assume that we missed his leading when we find ourselves in troubled circumstances. The lesson, that God can, the lesson is that God can take a bad experience and use it to increase our faith and our trust in him. Just because things don't go the way we think they ought to go is not a reason to become bitter and hard and acrid. Just because things don't taste the way that we think they ought to taste. We need to ensure that our hearts don't change because our God doesn't change. I'm going somewhere with you. Just be patient with me. Amen. I'll tell you, if he leads you to it, he will see you through it. And victory will be sweeter knowing you have a testimony of the goodness of God. But instead of expecting a miracle, they murmured. The water they thirsted for turned out to be bitter water. The water that was to soothe their thirst burned their throat. But God had not left them. God was setting them up for a miracle. And that is why it is so important that we remember our theme. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. In Exodus 15, 25, we read, And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. The Lord showed Moses a tree and said, cast it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. The tree which healed the waters should remind us that the cross can take all bitterness out of all such experiences. See, the tree is a type of the cross. You know, he became our weakness so that through him we are made strong. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says this, For he made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that he be made righteous, <clears throat> that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He became bitter so that we don't have to become bitter. He took whatever cause, whatever awful taste, whatever it is that we're going through, he took it upon him and he nailed it to the cross so that we could understand that he became that in order to give us a victory. It's all right, just be patient with me. Hopefully, it's like, in Galatians 3.13, it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on the tree. In Isaiah 53, it says, He is despised and rejected of man, of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was Wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. When the cross is applied, we understand that he became us in order to die for us. To give us the strength to make it through difficult times. He is that tree. Or that cross is a type, that tree is a type of a cross that was placed in that bitter water. Of course, there are some studies that said that there are trees that are found that are also bitter. And if you put them in bitter water, 
then the water becomes sweet. But in where they were, there is no such tree. There is no such tree. But they saw a tree there, and they put that tree in the water. You know, because God makes a way where there is no way. He's made a way for us. When he was nailed to the cross, when he, was, when he shed his blood on the cross, he made a way for us where there is no way. When we go through difficult times and we go through hard times that we don't understand, and I know this week has been one of them. Amen? Amen. I never expected the call that I got Saturday. Never in my life did I expect that call. Never that morning when I woke up did I even think about where I would be that day and what I encountered on that day. And yes, in my mind, I have, I'm like, okay, God... But you know what God has told me, and I believe what he's trying to tell us today is this. Don't you get bitter. Don't you get bitter. God knows exactly what he is doing. And I want to tell you, the one thing that I did encounter in that tragic situation, in that tragic peace, I encountered peace. I'm saying that tragic peace because that's what I I meant to say, tragic place. A peace that was unspeakable and full of glory. And I believe what God was trying to tell me and teach me through this scripture is even after a great victory, when there's something that comes that's harsh and that's tragic, you look at that, but you don't focus on that. You don't begin murmuring because things aren't going exactly how you thought they ought to go. You begin to magnify God because in the bitterness, there is victory. There is sweetness. Don't let your heart get hard. You allow your heart to stay soft and connected to God. That's why we must magnify the Lord at all times. That's why our pray, His praise shall continually be in our mouths because He's become what we do not want to be so that we don't have to be bitter. Does that make sense? Because God is on top of it. God is on top of it. When the cross is applied, we understand that he became us in order to die, to give us strength to make it through difficult times. Water is a type of the spirit. The tree is a type of the cross. When you apply the cross to your spirit, it creates a sweet spirit. Instead of rebellious, murmuring spirit, there is a spirit that says, God will make this work out for my good. I may not know how right now. I may not feel it right now. But I know God is working it out somehow. So I will magnify the Lord. Exodus 15, 26. And if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that, that healeth thee. The spiritual meaning that God intended the healing of these bitter waters to be assigned to Israel, a proof of his ability and willingness to heal them of all their natural and spiritual diseases. It is abundantly plain. The lesson God would have them learn from the incident is, you know what? I will heal you. I will take care of you. Just don't let your heart get bitter because something didn't go your way or the way you thought that it should go. You are a child of God. God is in control. And if you are his, he has you in his hand. And he will watch over you because God is on top of every situation. He's on top of every circumstance. And he deserves the praise no matter how our human mind sees it or thinks about it. God is still great. God is still in control. And God would never let us down. Because Mara led them to Elam. You know what? Once they got through those 
those bitter waters, the next station that they came to was a place where there were 12 wells of water, three score and 10 palms. That's 70 palm trees. And they encamped there by the waters. God took them to an oasis where they didn't have to worry about bitter waters because they made it through. You see, when you get through the trial, there's a victory that awaits. You can get bitter and allow adversity to gnaw at you and defeat you. Or you can magnify the Lord and have a testimony on the way to the wells. Amen. We can, we can get bitter for things because somebody said something to us. Somebody looked at us a certain way. Somebody just ignored us. Somebody didn't return our call. And we can allow that to gnaw at us and rob us for the blessing of God. Or we can just let it go and let God have his way. That's all right. Because God is on, on top of it. That's going to be interesting now. You pop that back in there for me. Oh. You got it? No, you don't. Here, I get it for you. Maybe God's telling me you need to stop there. It's bad enough. (laughs) No, I'm going to go on. That was a liar. We have a God that's on top of it. Everybody say, we have a God that's on top of it. Pastor mentioned, has mentioned this often, that God is not surprised by situations. Amen. And circumstances. God is never caught off guard. Thank you. Oh, these were better than mine. (laughs) He is not caught unprepared. God knows exactly what he is doing, and he's on top of it. Are y'all ready? These are preaching glasses. My goodness. (laughs) Isaiah 40 and 22 says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretches out the heavens as curtains and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. In Isaiah 66, 1 says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is a house that ye build unto me and where is a place of my rest? Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 says this, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. Where? High and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. There is no space in this world that does not hold his glory. That's what the angels see. That is what they know. That is how they look at the earth. We see hurt. We see storms. We see sickness. They see the glory of the Lord. They say the whole earth is full of the glory. In the midst of hurt, we must give God glory. Why? Because He is on top of everything. He's on top of every situation. He's on top of every problem. He's on top of every hurt. He's on top of every deception. He's on top of everything we don't understand. God is on top of it. For the Lord, Psalm 97, 9, for the Lord, for thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted above the gods. And John 8, 58 says this, and he said unto them, Verily, verily, I said unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Before the trouble, you know, first, the Pharisees and the scribes got very upset and wanted to kill Jesus for this statement. Simply because he told me, you know, before all this mess, before the law that you were following, before your father, before you became a nation, before you existed, I am. You know, before your trouble, before this hardship that we go through and these things in life that we don't understand and we don't see why. God is. 
And you know what? That's all we need to know. Is that my God is. He is. He is on top of it. He knows exactly what you're going through. So the best thing that we need to do, the, 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 the thing where we need to hook on and hold on to is the fact that God knows and he's in control. Amen. And I will say it again. Maybe it's, I, I can't preach the theme message again, but I'll say it again, though. We need to magnify the Lord at every opportunity. We can't allow the devil to take the blessing away because something didn't go the way we thought it ought to go. Because, you know, bitterness doesn't hurt the other person. Kind of like, hey, if you hate somebody, you're not hurting them. If you're bitter towards somebody, you're not hurting them. If you don't like somebody, you're not hurting them by not liking them. I don't know why I'm going back to this. You're not hurting them. You're hurting yourself. Being mad at God doesn't hurt God. It doesn't change Him. It doesn't change what He's going to do and what He is doing. Being mad at God, not praising God, doesn't change Him. But it does change you. And there are some things that we must let go of and allow God to minister to us and heal that Mara in our lives, that bitterness. We need to apply that cross to that place in our lives that's bitter, that place in our lives that's not right with God. We need to apply the blood of Jesus Christ there. Help me, Jesus. Because it is only through the blood of Jesus Christ and the love. Because you know when he loved you? When you were the most unlovable. When you didn't even love yourself. When that brought you to an altar because you couldn't stand yourself. And you know what he looked down and he said? He took the cross. He took the tree. Amen. And he he applied it to that bitterness and he healed that and he filled you with his power and with his spirit and with this this Holy Ghost and power. And we left it there at an altar and we stood up and we got baptized and we became new creatures. We were filled with his spirit and he gave his power to overcome. The tree was applied to our lives and it changed us and it transformed us and it took us, amen, to his rest. It gave us the Holy Ghost and it it helped us. We cannot afford to be bitter. It doesn't help us at all. It destroys us. And it destroys what God wants to do with us. And it will take the blessing of God from our lives. And instead of enjoying the presence of God, we find ourselves thinking we're not worthy, which is furthest from the truth. Because something didn't go the way we thought it ought to go. We need the blood of Jesus Apply to us each and every day. Mm. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. In Hebrews 12, 2, it says this, looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the beginning, and he is the, I'm telling you, he's on top of everything. He's on top of everything. 
He is the author and finisher of our faith. He that he started a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Amen. If he started something in you, he hasn't stopped working. He's waiting on you. Somebody said, I'm not ready yet. And I thought, I thought of Moses. That day that he woke up and he went to tend sheep. And then he ran into a burning bush. You think he was ready? You think he was ready? You think he woke up and he said, I'm ready today. I'm ready to lift, lead five million people out of Egypt. I'm ready today. You think he was ready? No, he wasn't ready. But God said, you know what? It's time. You know what God is trying to tell us? I believe he's telling us it's time. It's time. Ready or not, he's not, he didn't want you to be perfect. He just wants you to be humble. He wants your heart to be right. He didn't want you to be bitter. He wants you to understand and magnify the Lord because it's time. Because ready or not, he's coming. Ready or not, revival is coming. Ready or not. This place is going to be filled in the name of Jesus Christ. And you know, whether you like it or not, He'll do it with or without you. I want to be a part of what God wants to be doing. I don't want to allow bitterness to rob me of what God has in store for me. I want to be a part of what God is doing each and every day. But I can't be so tied up on me, amen, that I miss what's going on in the spirit world. So i got to apply the cross. i got to apply the cross. I plead the blood of Jesus. I do it every day. I do it every morning. I tell you what, I'll do it every morning. Amen. I'll go by Erica's room. I'll go in there. Of course, she's not there. But there's a stuffed mat animal on her bed that she left me when she left. I guess to fill the space, right? And I kiss it. And I say, Lord, bless my daughter. And I go out the door. And I stop. And I say, I plead the blood. Amen. Jeremy don't live with us anymore, but the room that he stayed in, I go in there. I said, Lord, you bless my son. On the way out, I cross that door, bro. I said, I plead the blood of Jesus. Before I leave the house, I say, I plead the blood of Jesus. I don't want bitterness to steal what God has in store for us. That tree. You understand what I'm trying to say is that we need to apply the blood of Jesus to everything that isn't right in our lives so that we can become what he wants us to be. Amen. I'll never be ready for what God has in store for me. But that's why he gives me the power to overcome. That's why he fills me with his spirit. Because if I ever feel comfortable in the presence of God, I'm in trouble. Whenever I come up here and I feel I got it all together, I ain't got nothing together. Oh, it's 8.30. Can we all stand? I don't know if this made sense at all today. I tell you, I fought with it. But I know what I'm fighting with, Brother Wilson. I'm fighting a spirit. It's what I'm fighting. Right? And that's an ugly spirit. The spirit of bitterness is an ugly spirit. And sometimes we come against it and we don't know what it is. But because there's been hurt in our lives, there's been things that, that we've held on to that we need to just let go of and let God take care of it. Because we ain't going to go to heaven with it. And the only thing that takes care of it, the only thing that will, will, will release it is when you allow the power of God in your life and say, God, take it from me. I want your peace. I want your joy. I want your strength. I need you in my life. I need you. I've got to let it go because the only thing is the tree. Amen. He could have picked anything else. He could have said, Moses, just step into the water and it becomes sweet. He could have said, just lift up that rod one more time or your staff one more time and strike that water and make it be sweet. He said, no, you take a tree. And we know what that tree represents. You take that tree. You take that cross. You have a hard time in your life. You take the cross. He became everything. He said, 
we, don't, we have a high priest that has been through everything that we have been through, that we will ever go through. He is touched by the feelings of your infirmities. He knows exactly how you feel. But he says, you know, with that, you come to me boldly so that you can find grace, so you can find that tree in time of need. Because if there's going to be revival, there's got to be a release of that spirit. And the only thing that will release that spirit is the blood of Jesus Christ. God, I hope I'm helping somebody here today. It's time to let go of some things, church. Just let it go. It's time to let go of some things. Whenever times get difficult and you are tempted to get bitter with God, look for the tree. Because it's been provided, he has provided a reminder. I went through this for you. I know your hurt. I know your disappointment. I know your loneliness. But just like I was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And just like I was in the lion's den with Daniel, I am here for you today. Do not grow bitter, magnify. Do not grow bitter, magnify. Do not blame God, exalt his name. Because you will not find peace in Mara without a tree. You will not find peace in your bitterness without a tree, without a cross, without a cross. You will not find peace in your difficulty without a cross. We need to take hold of the cross and say, Lord, you became that for me. And through difficult times and hard times, you say, why, 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 why? But we say, oh, no, God, I don't understand it. I don't know it in my mind. I cannot connect to it. But, Lord, my spirit says I will magnify the Lord at all times. Your blood, Lord. You, you are nailed to the cross, and I plead the blood of Jesus in my life. I plead it, God, and help me. Help me not to be bitter. Let the peace of the Holy Ghost reign in my mind, in my heart, and in my soul.